Uh, thank you. I, actually, I'm going to present some uh, information about how we're Citroën direct in France. So I will start first by saying what is a Citroën, what do we mean by a Citroën, because it's quite a generic word and can be a bit strange. Uh, it's very specific. We will look at the extraction method, the lighting, the tools, the different digging methods, and next we'll see a little bit how we can uh, solve the problem of underground orientation and some information on miners, the time to dig, and maybe also the homogeneity in the shape of Citroëns. I will try to be as short as possible because it's quite a big agenda. <laughs> Uh, first, what is a souterrain? I mean, a souterrain in France, the noun souterrain means a cave that has been made by men, but to be used for, by this man, by a member of community for temporary uh, use, uh, temporary live there. I mean, can be very short, can be a bit longer. Uh, and they are composed of several galleries where, that are leading to several rooms where we can live or we can store things. So we find some uh, specificity specific feature just like water wells or spring in some cases but also ventilation pipe ventilation shaft or you can also have some uh, some niches to put daily uh, object of the daily life stone bench you can find all this and some of them also find some uh, defensive feature i will uh, just yeah some other information so main most of the time you just have one entrance sometimes two but may, most of the time just have one which is very often closed with a door, you still have the remaining part of the doors. And the length is quite small, so we are not in big quarries or something like that, it's very small. On average, uh, we, these, these are data based on 200 citrines. Uh, we have around 40 meter development, but the standard deviation is rather big because it's going from 10 to 150 meters, more or less. Uh, we have our, on, our, on average three rooms, more or less, but it can be one, can be 10 also, so the standard deviation is also very big here. And most of these cavities are, are like in medieval period. It's quite big, uh, wide range period here from 11th to 18th century, but some of the more specific datation are made from location to location. So here you have one example of uh, one citrine which has a defens defensive purpose. It's very clear to that for this defensive purpose because you have loopholes here, just in order to shoot the people who get, like to get in with a closing system here, a ditch here. Uh, in order to avoid people going this way and another door. And next you have a bigger room where you have the living space and this is under a mount. Uh, another case here is where we have more storage function is this two trains in the town area, so more in the south uh, part of France. And all around that here are uh, silos, so granaries. So you see that the storage function is much more clear in this case. Uh, and we have also other type of sutrains, and we have what we call the ring sutrains. Uh, we don't understand anything about these ring sutrains because we know these are caves, and the map is just like that, around, making a ring, and we don't know the use. We know it's linked to uh, some habitats, but we don't know what, what was the purpose of this. I will come back on these sutrains also later on. Uh, we have uh, finally another type of sutrain which is much more located in the town area, which is called the uh, Segelatai. And this is built in the in a tall way in the valley, and you have an entrance here leading to a small room here, and here you have a second entrance which is most of the time closed afterwards. I will come back also back on these sutrains. Uh, oh yes, oh there is a small problem here. Uh, you finally uh, the what we call the mush or the collective sutrains. Sorry, the picture should be here. <laughs> uh, and these sutrains is quite different of the other because all other ones were rather small trains, 200 meter maximum. Here you have with trains with one entrance from the church and leading to a long street and each, uh, along this street we see a lot of individual caves. And these were used as shelter during the war between the Spanish house and, uh, the, the, uh, and France on the northern part of, of France. And we have text very clearly that says, okay, this was used as shelter during the war in order to avoid the, the, the rays from the, the, from the warrior, from the, 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 yeah, from, yeah, from the roads. So this is, most of the sutrains we have seen are mainly on the western side of France. We have also some sutrains who are in the northern part that I just showed you, which is uh, called Muche. And these are, this is mainly the part where we find these sutrains. Let's now look a bit more on how we make sutrains or we dig sutrains. And so I guess, there is one big difference between a suturing and a, uh, and a quarry. There are three main things that we can differentiate. 
is first of all the small galleries. We have very narrow galleries, so you cannot dig a, a, a suturing as a quarry because it's very narrow, at least for the galleries. The second thing which is quite different is also the, the, the fact that you have specific features. You have bottleneck, you have uh, uh, turning uh, corridors, you have benches, you have loopholes, and you need to take this into account when you dig this suturing. And finally, the last thing which makes a difference is that uh, you have only one access and not several access from different parts. So this means that we have uh, different methods to dig uh, the suturates and also in the function of different parts. We believe that the galleries were not made in the same way of, uh, as the, the, the rooms. For the galleries, it's so narrow, you cannot extract blocks, it's very difficult. You just crushed the, 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 the rocks in small pieces and small uh, parts and you extract it. It's maybe it's possible to, to mix very small blocks with very narrow, it's maximum 60 centimeters uh, wide, so it's very difficult. And all the, uh, the, the, the fronts that we have seen, the unachieved, the unfinished uh, galleries, were always, you did, couldn't identify blocks that were extracted. But for rooms, we have a different system. And here we have an example of a room which is not finished. And here you see that first layer is not finished, and next there is even here another layer. And you see that there were extracting blocks here. You see the, the small trenches, the small groove here that were helping. And so we have strong indication that for larger rooms, they were extracting block and maybe selling it or building something else outside. Another important thing is the, the tools and the lighting. Uh, so we know, I mean, we have some indication of how they were using, uh, which type of light they were using from the quarrymen in the 19th centuries and also. Uh, from some trays you can find in the suit train. So we believe that they were using lamps, oil grams or grease lamps. Uh, they were either fixed on the side of the suit train, either, and we have some, I mean, this is a contemporary picture, but it's a reproduction of how it could be at that time. So it's just a piece of wood fixed in the wall and you have a light above it. That's one solution. The other solution is to make some niches in the sutra, in the wall of the sutrains. And here I will focus on these two galleries. And you will see that here you have all these niches that are here on the side and that were used to place uh, the, the light. You see here another example. Here another one. And here we have some lights that have been found in these sutrains. This is the first example here, another here, and here another one. So we have some indication how they were using lights uh, in these sutrains. Uh, another source of light, finally, is also the extraction shaft. When you are digging your suturing, the extraction shaft is open and providing light at least in, di direct, uh, in the immediate environment of the room, which is behind this extraction shaft. The tools, uh, we have, I mean, we, 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 have, we believe that and we know that they were using many big, big axes. And this picture is quite interesting because it shows that we have two kinds of tools. The first one is the sharp, fine points, which is used to make the wall. And here on the roof, on the, the double-shaped roof, we have a flat edge around three to six centimeters, it depends on the place. And it's, you see rather clearly here all the marks on the, uh, on the roof. So we know that we have this type of tools. Is it one tool or two tools? We have, I mean, it's another example here of the fine, fine point, uh, sharp point fine, uh, fine, sorry. And here we have one tool that has been found in one suturing, uh, in the town area. Uh, so it confirmed that we have a two pick axe, uh, which has been found, and we have three of them have been found in France in the total. This is for the, to extract the stone. Now we have also some uh, ventilation shafts to go upside, to, uh, from, which are made from the, uh, from the suturing to the surface. And we have found by chance two years ago, a drill, in an extraction shaft. So this is quite lucky. It was still there in the shaft. The shaft is something like that. And uh, the, 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 the owner was trying to, to, to go back to the surface and he found this. Uh, so you see we have the two faces of it. It's sharp on one side, on the external side. And it was used like this. So you have here the shaft here. And the problem is how to leverage this uh, drill to the, upper, uh, to the upper surface. In some area here in the Vienna area, it's close to Poitiers, you see all these small holes here, made here, they were used as a leverage to push the drill upstart, 
a up. That's one solution. Another solution which is proposed by uh, Charnou and Tribi is to have a, another kind of leverage like this one, where two people, one people is uh, using the drill here and the other one is making the pressure to go up on this side. This is another solution. And finally, where are the other tools? So we have found these two types of tools and we have some archaeological information about this, but we believe that there were other tools, or is to extract all the, the, the stone from the suturanes, etch and mask to cut the, 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 the stone, but also maybe plumb lines, compass, in order to get orientation. We don't have any information about this, we have never found anything, but it, you can assume that they were, they're using, they were using these kind of tools. The digging methods, so I will show two main type of digging methods first in a sloping ground, and this is typically for uh, the Sigala type suturanes, where you start from downside the hill and upside the hill, and you start to dig in the direction of each other. You make a room here, and finally, when you have finished to dig, you close the downside, the, 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 the below part. Here, you leave it open. Most of the time, we find some indication of the house here up. And next, you can also uh, make your closing system, your niche, other feature, and you close this part. Here, you have a, uh, a drain uh, in order to drain water outside of the of the of the of the cave. The second case is a case. Oh, sorry, it's not like that. Uh, the second case was a case uh, in a in a flat area where you have an extraction shaft. Uh, sorry, it was uh, and. Um, here you dig and finally go in direction of each other and next you close it in the same way. Extraction shafts are very important in a lot of parts of front. In a lot of suturans you find this extraction shaft. You see here the extraction shaft and you see here also a, a, a bottleneck. So this means that this part of the suturan is very difficult to, be, to get access from the original entrance which is behind this bottleneck. So in order to circumvent the problem of getting inside the suturanes from uh, and to get all the the, the 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 rocks outside via this way, they were using this shaft here, which is much easier. Way. Another example is here from the bottom from uh, to the top, where you see the closing system of the extraction shaft after the the strain was finished, and you can also see that in some cases they were making some um, ventilation here, ventilation pipe inside the extraction shaft. So originally this shaft was certainly closer to the bottom, now it's closed from the upside, and they were keeping one small uh, shaft, even two here, uh, to, get, uh, to get air into the suturing. We have also some kind of uh, ventilation shaft in the side wall, so it's not in the roof, but in the side wall, you see that the two, two ventilation shaft here, and this was closed and totally filled with, uh, with rocks and mud or something like that. Finally, what is also quite important is the orientation. How you need to have your suturin in the right place compared to your building upside. Here in this case, you have a moat, a mount uh, in the surface, and you need to have a suturin which is in the right place. Uh, and you have to avoid that your suturin is not creating some collapsing in your surface building. So it's quite important to have a good collaboration between those who are making suturins and those who are making uh, the, the building and surface. I will show a further example, which is this one, which is very, we show very clearly that the, sutra, the, the, the people doing suturins and people doing, uh, building a castle were collaborating, except this small part here, all the suturin is not under the wall, it's really inside the, the map of the castle. So, the, the miners and people building are collaborating, are working together. We have, I mean, this has to be the work of some specialists. I will come back on the, who were the miners and who could have been the miners. So we don't have, we haven't found any measurement tools, but they, it was very likely that they used some of them uh, with compass, plan line. But how do we organize things in order to make sure that we are connecting two caves that are, two suturing that are dig to, toward each other? So we know that they could have listened to the peaks at noise when they are digging. We heard the digging, the noise of the digging, and so you can go uh, in the right direction. And we believe also that all the communication between the suturin and the, the surface could be used in order to get the right orientation when you are digging. So it can be an extraction shaft that helps you to get the right orientation. 
you can have also the entrance, the ventilation shaft, all this connection between the, the, cable, the suture train and the surface help to make sure that you are not sapping, mining your surface uh, that, uh, buildings and also going in the right direction. So we haven't found a lot of measurement, uh, error of measurement, but we have some. Uh, and I will give you two examples. Here we have a suturing and they are to make a link between two parts of the suturing via uh, a bottleneck. And the problem is that they start to build a bottleneck here. But here it's leading nowhere. They have, they have to, be, to do it here. So they move, they start here and then they move here. That's the first example, this is in Vendée. Uh, sorry. And the second example is here, where they, they build the first part of the suturing here, via extraction shaft here, here and here. And here you have a link between these two areas. And here this is the cut. And you see that they were not deep enough. And finally they had to dig a bit more in order to reach the bottleneck here. So they were not deep enough and so they, had, they were obliged to correct by digging a little bit more here. These are two examples of measure, measure, uh, error of measurement. So who were the miners? It's quite a difficult answer. <laughs> Uh, certainly for the Middle East, we don't have any uh, paper of any... Uh, we have one quote from the 13th century or put, uh, I mean, a text saying that two men were uh, making a suit train. Uh, we have uh, some other... But we know also that in the medieval period, when you had a war, you have some miners used in order to sap. So we know that there are some specialists, some people who know how to dig, how to, 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 to mine. And this can be a source of information, but more than that, we don't have. We also know for the mission in northern France, these uh, trains that are collective suit trains, we have some text for this area, and we know that it was a collective organization. People from the village were organizing themselves in order to, uh, to make this shelter and to build them, to dig them. And so we know for, for this area more than for the other area, but this is a bit more recent than this area, and, uh, and, uh, not for the rest of France. Uh, the time to dig a suture, and I will not go into the details of this because it's quite long, but I try to get some information how much time do we need to, need to, to make such a suture. Um, and so I took some external information from, uh, further, from, from previous time, or from experience from other authors, and arrived to some information that a man, a quarryman, could extract between one and three cubic meters of rocks per day. But actually, it depends on the experience. It depends on the type of rocks, it depends on the many things. But what we can find as a conclusion of this is that if you are based on this issue, you, have, you take two miners who is held by his family or some other people just to extract all the, the rocks, it takes a couple of months or two, three months to make a middle range to terrain of 100 feet, uh, 50 cubic meter. A bit more, a bit less, it depends. But it remained feasible in a relative short term. Uh, it can be longer. We have also to, to remember that we can stop to, to make a suture train for, for a few months and next start again. You can, many suture trains uh, uh, were maybe made in several stages. This is uh, very likely. Um, yeah, I will guess I will skip the, the next part because I'm a bit too long. I don't know. And I will. Uh, I will skip it. I will, I will go to the homogeneity of the matter suture. What is quite interesting to see is how do we have this homogeneity? How do we... Uh, you see, these are different maps of suture in northern France. They are all of them with this street, this lateral cells, and you have several streets, but they have all the same type of map, the same, and we have hundreds of them. That's the point. I mean, here, these are all the dots where we have found this type of suture and we believe there were much more than that. So the question is, how is the knowledge spreading from one village to the other one? Do we have team going from one village to another one? Do we have, uh, is it just socia so the sociality, the fact that you have a family in the next village that will imitate you in doing such a train? This is a big question that we have and which is really an answer. In the same way, we have those ring trains, and we have, some, we, have we have found some uh, Similarities, and I mean, it's very clear we have a lot of them, but we find them in a lot of parts of France. We have them here in the, in the uh, uh, central massif, here in the central part of France, but we have also some in Corrèze, 
some in Vendée, how is these trends? We don't understand these trends now. I mean, and how do we find out there? And you find them also in other countries. If you go to Austria, to Czech Republic and Moravia, you find these rings of trains. These are very small, but why? How, how is the information spreading from one place to another place? It's really unknown, and it is something that still needs a lot of inquiry. We have the same thing here for this uh, suit train, uh, cigarette time, uh, type suit train. Uh, here we have several maps, and here you find where we can find them in France. It's very far from each other, and we don't understand how uh, the, the information was spread. Is it's one solution, one idea is, which is behind that is that when a man is, is faced with the same problem in the same context, they tend to reproduce the same solution. But is it enough to explain the, the, such a big similarity? I don't know. Maybe there are some other explanations. Uh, so, as a conclusion, so we have good knowledge on how we have the trains, but uh, I mean, we know that uh, further archaeological excavation could help to better understand how it was made, and certainly uh, how to how was spread information. Who were the miners? Well, what is the time to dig a radius train? Do we have only professional or also the man on the street can dig a train? These are still unanswered questions. Thank you very much.